told me of this extraordinary pursuit he'd been on, chasing deadly alien hornets through Earth's history. Hornets, I ask you! Still, I should have known that he'd be involved in something to do with the end of civilized life on the planet as we know it. The doctor had erected a kind of invisible bell jar over his house, a force shield, keeping all the deadly creatures trapped within, along with all the things and beings they have possessed. Yes, dear listener, the doctor had trapped us inside with these terrible creatures. The doctor's tales were strange, even for him. Stuffed animals coming to deadly life. The dancer who stole the haunted ballet shoes. The old doll's house in which he became trapped. If I hadn't known him well, I'd have sworn he was making it all up. Then there was the circus where they made him put his head in the lion's mouth and the woodlands filled with wild dogs and besieged nuns. And all the while he had a date with his enemies here for the final showdown. Once the doctor's tales were over, Dawn had arrived and we emerged blinking from the cellar to find Ness Cottage overrun by the possessed animals. It was a madhouse with Mrs. Wibsey presiding over it all. Soon, however, as the morning brightened, the animals fell asleep where they stood, as was their wont. I didn't trust them an inch, however. Just by looking at them, you knew that something very nasty was going on behind their glass eyes. It was flattering that the doctor should think that I, his old colleague and the brig's second-in-command, could do something to help him defeat these horrible foes. But I couldn't help wondering why. Little did either of us realize that it was for the most unimaginably horrible reason of all. Doctor Who, Hornet's Nest. Hive of Horror by Paul Mars. Starring Tom Baker and Richard Franklin.